Hey, how's it going? We just finished Romans, so we're going to start in the book of Acts and read Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So starting in Acts here, now this is after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, it's written by Luke, who also wrote Luke, and so uh, he's writing this, and this is taking place after the crucifixion and resurrection, but it's before Jesus ascends back into heaven. So Jesus is talking to his, uh, his disciples, the apostles. Um, he's doing that for a period of 40 days, and in verse 1 in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. So he's talking a little bit about the book he wrote before. Verse 3, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Um, what a cool thing to think about, not only the disciples being able to be with Jesus uh, while he was alive uh, for those three years and being taught uh, what Jesus did and just seeing all that, but then also to be able to commune with the resurrection. Jesus for that time. I mean, that would be probably, I would imagine, a little bit different experience. Uh, very neat. I wonder what that was like. It's hard to even imagine. And then verse 4, you know, we see a lot of uh, uh, you know, a few different things, you know, where Jesus gives like the Great Commission, where we see at the end of the book of Matthew, a few different things where Jesus says at the kind of the end there uh, that are super, super important. Everything that Jesus says obviously is really important, uh, but I imagine the things he says right at the end are going to be very, very important. And so verse 4, he kind of gives them this last command. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem. But wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now this is a really interesting thing because the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so important that the disciples had been taught by Jesus, seen what he has done, and also gone out and done it themselves uh, for a, a long period of time. And even after all of those things and communing with a resurrected Jesus, still he says, wait, wait in Jerusalem. And what is the thing that's so important that they must wait? They can't start their ministry yet until they get this thing. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so it's obviously an extremely, an extremely important thing if the disciples needed it. If the disciples who were taught directly by Jesus needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we probably do as well. Verse 6, So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? I think this is funny where the disciples, I, I feel like, are kind of getting a little bit off track here. You know, this, we're talking about the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then they're talking about if, if the kingdom is going to be restored to Israel. In verse 7, I love Jesus' response. He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father is set by his own authority. He kind of just tells them, you don't get to know. And then in verse 8, he goes back to redirecting back to what they're supposed to talk about, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So they're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on them. Super, super good stuff. Um, I got this verse prophetically one time. Somebody handed me this verse and just told me that it was uh, that it was for me, and it was uh, it was several years ago. And uh, I thought it was a little weird because I'd already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, so I was like, I don't know what this means. I don't know if this is important. Um, eventually, it ended up actually becoming. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I realized why I was given that because then later on, um, you know, I had something where. 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit for me was just something I checked off a box. You know, it was like I didn't continue to pray in tongues. I didn't continue to uh, explore the, the gifts of the Spirit. I just kind of, you know, had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I was like, all right, sweet, that's over with. Now I can kind of move on with my life, which is, of course, not what we're supposed to do. We want, it's kind of more like a, a starting point than it is like you know, you've reached the finish line or something, you know. And so um, I kind of put it away for a long time. And then uh, right before I got healed from a chronic illness that I had for many years, um, I started praying in tongues uh, the most I had in my entire life. And uh, and this kind of like this, uh, like kind of fire, like, in my in my belly kind of got ignited it was like that was like what feeling the presence of god was uh was at that time was like this just kind of fire in the belly and um and just a couple of weeks after that, I started getting healed from that from that illness. And so I was like, boy, I bet you that's why I got that verse prophetically. Is like you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. It was like, okay, I finally started actually uh, living out the baptism of the Holy Spirit instead of just thinking it was one singular moment where it was like I can do that, check off a pox, and put it away. So I encourage you, if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit before, and, uh, and maybe you were like me and you just thought, hey, I'm just checking off this box and now it's over with, I encourage you to just start start praying in tongues again. Start pursuing gifts again uh, because it's not something where we want to just check off a box and be done with it. We want to keep pursuing those things uh, because God's got really good things for us. Um, and of course, if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I encourage you to go ahead and pursue that. I, I try not to be weird when I talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit because for a long, long time I wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it was always weird hearing people talk about it because I felt like people kind of used it to... Um, I don't know, kind of separate out the ones that were baptized and the ones that weren't. And so I just encourage you, if you're, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, there are certainly no super Christians. Um, but I do encourage you to go ahead and pursue it because it's worth pursuing. Um, and I just encourage you to go do that to, because uh, God wants to give this gift. And, um, and so I encourage you to go get it. And if you're already baptized in the Holy Spirit and you're not praying in tongues, I encourage you to pray in tongues, even just a little bit every day, even if it's just in your mind or out loud, whatever you got to do. Um, I encourage you to do that. And if you're already, you know, pursuing spiritual gifts, like, hey, come on, let's go. Good stuff. So let's just pray. And let's close this out. Lord God, I just thank you so much for your scripture and your word. And I just pray that wherever we are uh, with, in our relationship with you, Lord God, I just pray that you'd show us that next step, whatever that is. And we just pray that your spirit would be upon us, Lord God. And that, that power when the Holy Spirit comes on us, Lord God, I just pray that that power would, be, would, be, would just be on us, Lord God. We just thank you so much for your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.